Hello fellas, do you want some builds? Yeah that's right, builds. Today we'll make a video about builds, something truly never done before. Now these aren't just any builds, these are the best builds in all of Payday. Well at least that is until the next overpowered thing comes around. Now I'm not gonna bore you with details or anything, so let's just get right into the builds, after I tell you about my new epic steam group called the Cult of Metal Pipes. We have epic giveaways happening there, and you get to be part of the metal pipes. So why wouldn't you join it? Now let's talk about some belts, finally. So you wanna be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You gotta hit us up. Alright, so for the first build, we're going to use Anarchist with the latest Campbell LMG from the Mac Shea Weapon Pack 4, considering it allows you to reach 100 accuracy and high stability like it's nothing. As it is right now, it's the best LMG. But if you don't want to buy the DLC for it, you can just switch out for the KSP instead. The secondary is basically any high damage tier SMG, like the Krinkov, the kill those was pretty easy. Now I made two versions of this build. The first one uses two converts with just Berserker. If you want to start with it, just use a Molotov and get to your desired health. One extremely important detail you achieve with having at least one convert is that you are able to tank a full sniper shot without losing any health. So always try to have at least one convert at a time. With that said, two converts are ridiculously overpowered and help a lot, but I'm no fan of them personally. So the second version I made for this build is basically a much more lazy and relaxed version using no converts, but just Frenzy Aced and Iron Man Basic. That will allow you to tank sniper shots just fine. You don't need to circ with it, you either just play with the 40% base circ you get from Frenzy, or go further by using C4 for even more damage. But that's up to you. If you want to use circ using C4, make sure you lose all of your armor, then get one armor tick back and then blow the C4 while standing up. Both versions are extremely overpowered, but the first version with the two converts is just that much better, since you basically are creating much more cover for you and your team. When it comes to actually playing the build itself, there isn't that much to explain. Starting with Unseen Strike, because I think some people don't know how it actually works. Basically you get hit by any unit once, then wait 4 seconds without being hit at all, and now you got 35% crit chance for 6 seconds on the basic version. This is extremely useful for killing bulldozers. Besides this, the build plays like your average LMG setup on Anarchist. You can run around the map like a maniac and get a shit ton of kills. With the two convert setup, it's so strong that even the toughest of heists, like Hawks and Breakout Day 1, are easily done using it. However, both versions of the build still force you to use cover here and there to get armor back and to maintain your 2 second guard mode that comes with the perk. But the next build doesn't have this issue, so let's talk about it. As I just teased, this build is a lot better in survivability because it is a dodge perk. The perk being Hacker, which is easily the best perk deck in this game currently. Additionally, we are also using Triple Mark 10 SMGs, which also gives us a huge amount of damage output. Not as good as the previous build, but still very strong. With huge survivability and DPS combined, this is basically about the best setup you can make. We also got first aid kits and inspire aced, which is very helpful for the team. With how the build was made, it basically allows you to play as aggressive as you can possibly imagine. If you ever get rushed by too many enemies, just use your pocket ECM and you are able to run around the map just fine. And if you're about to die, just use a first aid kit. You can also heal yourself whenever the pocket ECM is active by killing enemies. It also reduces your cooldown on the pocket ECM. One enemy killed equals one less second on the cooldown, which doesn't sound like much at first, but knowing how much this build can actually kill, this is really damn good. Not to mention you also get 20 additional dodge for 30 seconds when you kill one enemy during the pocket ECM, giving Hacker the most dodge possible. If you wouldn't count the a smoke bomb at least. Now I do imagine the background gameplay you see just tells everything you need to know. I'm just running around the map like an absolute idiot, but I'm doing all good, considering how overpowered the build is. Another thing I want to point out is the painkillers aced. When you're having a teammate in an open area, just like this one here, with painkillers aced, he's able to run into cover without any issues. If I were to use quick fix instead of painkillers aced, he might have died here, for a second time leading into custody. As good as this build is, 
it really only has one problem, and that is killing enemies on long range. I definitely wouldn't pick this build for like a bomb forest. However, the next build got us covered in this regard. The third build is any alcoholic's favorite, because, well, it is stoic. The primary weapon is basically one of the best assault rifles in this game. It easily gets to 100 accuracy and stability, while having amazing ammo pickup and damage output. The secondary is the good old grim shotgun with the tombstone rounds. They are pretty similar to the dragon's breath rounds, but instead of fire, it's poison. These rounds are so good that they even one tap heavy seals, unlike the fire rounds. With that said, this grim is incredibly useful for killing hordes of enemies without any effort put in. You just sorta of shoot in a general area of enemies and you will get a ton of kills. For anything further away like snipers, you can just use your assault rifle easily to take care of them. Now for the skills, everything should be self-explanatory. Originally I only used one choker on this build, but I figured for the best build video I might as well just stick with two. We also got Unseen Strike Basic again, for dealing with bulldozers. This setup, but slightly changed and optimized for a dodge build, would work equally well or even better on Hacker, simply because Hacker is just a better perk deck. But for the sake of variety, I made this a stoic build, considering I don't want to use the same perk deck for every build in this video. However, feel free to change some things around for your own liking, as per usual. One thing that could be improved on on this build is the armor. Currently I'm using the Heavy Ballistic Vest, but you can switch out to the CTV for more health. Or just drop the Inspire Ace skill and just get Iron Man Ace instead for the ICTV. The choice is really yours, but I think the Heavy Ballistic Vest is good enough for the sake of mobility. Not to mention it does have a decent amount of health. You already have first aid kits, so I don't think you need more health, honestly. This build is a good all-rounder. It works for basically any heist, doesn't matter if it's Bomb Forest or Hox Breakout. It does anything just fine. But it certainly doesn't allow you to rush objectives as much as the previous build, since you do need to hop into cover here and there to get your hip flask back. But that's about it really. This is the only issue this build has. However, as you might have guessed already, the next build does not have this issue at all. And in fact it's so good, it might as well just be better than the Hanker build. Alright, it's time for the fourth build that I kid you not, I absolutely hate this one. It's a leech build using the Command of 101 rocket launcher with bullet storm. As much as I hate the build, I cannot deny the sheer brute force it has. But anyway, the primary weapon is basically anything with high DPS, like the Akimbo Krinkovs to deal with those pesky bulldozers. The secondary weapon, or I guess the primary in this case, is obviously the Commando 101 Rocket Launcher. This is what you will be using most of the time. For the skills, we take anything to aid our team like Inspire, but also grab some things to make the Commando RPG more usable, as it has no ammo pickup. With that said, the build also takes use of Revenant, which I personally absolutely hate, but this is unironically overpowered. You can literally run around the map, shoot your rocket launcher like there is no tomorrow, and if you die, just revive yourself with either Messiah or Fine Death. And if that doesn't work, you still have the Leech Ampule. Just be sure you use a medic bag or revive one of your teammates, otherwise you die again with the Leech Ampule. This build takes literally no effort and no brain to play because of the just mentioned skills. The Commander Rocket Launcher allows you to kill a whole spawn group with just one click. The Akimbo Krinkovs or again any other high DPS weapon really is just being used to kill dozers or maybe single targets I guess. When it comes to choosing the deployables, it really depends what you prefer. I personally play with two ammo bags and one medic bag, because it allows me to shoot that many more rockets, but feel free to change some things around. I think the hardest part when playing this build is actually trying to choose what you are going to revive yourself with. If you don't get fine death, do you either use Messiah or the Leech Ampule? It is truly a tough decision to make. Especially if you're not used to this type of build. Honestly, I don't really know what else to say, and even if I would know, I probably wouldn't want to, because goddamn do I hate this build. This build is the reason why Death Sentence isn't that hard anymore, because anyone can play with a build that takes no effort, like this one. It's not the player's fault for using these builds, but I think it just shows that balance isn't really a thing in this game currently. But anyway, we're only 4 builds in, so let's continue with even more builds that aren't as scuffed.
Hi. Uncle threatened me to join his efforts to get incalculable amounts of clout. Since we are such good friends and my life is definitely not in danger, I couldn't resist giving him a helping hand. Copycat with full dodge is a bit of a sleeper pick that no one realizes the potential of. Giving 2 seconds of god mode to a deck that can get up to 65 dodge is obviously quite nutty. That's not all though. This version of Copycat also comes with all of these abilities. I can't spend time talking about all of them because my time in this world is limited. That's not because I am in danger though, because there is no danger. Sad help. Akimba Grimms shoot 12 pellets per trigger pull and each of those pellets can trigger up 1000 damage or for poison damage over time, which stuns and has infinite range. And it is piss easy to use, allowing you to pull off insane plays with minimal mouse movement. White Streak is a high damage pistol and thanks to Trigger Happy, it can kill dozers very fast. I modified the White Streak to look cool, so you can probably get some marginally better stats with it if you want to optimize. Thanks to Copycat's auto reload, you can put White Streak away without reloading. By the time that you see the next dozer pair, it should be reloaded anyway. This build doesn't have an ace deployable, but that's not really an issue. You can bring ECMs for objective oriented mobile maps, ammo for holdite style ones, trip mines to open doors and this is also good if you want to pay for it I guess. You may be thinking why you use this gun when this exists and stuff, but I have a reason. The weapons, modifications and the perk tech I have chosen is entirely free of DLC for those that can't or won't buy every piece of new content. Okay, we are done, Uncle. Please let me go. I'm begging you. Hi. You probably know me by either of these nicknames, or the souls that I've done over the years. But that's not why I'm here today. Instead, I'm here with Uncle's permission to present to you what I consider to be one of the most consistent builds in the entire game. But first, let me define what I mean by a consistent build. A setup that nullifies as many external factors that could impact players' performance as possible. And I think that this one does a great job at that. The build score, Armor Perk Deck, graciously provides us with 2 short armor and 2 seconds long invincibility frames whenever our armor happens to break, with a 15 seconds cooldown. And in case something still goes south, the build has 14 get out of jail free car, I mean, for stay kits, to recover even from the worst. As our main damage dealer, we have a 500 damage sniper rifle of your preference, and to back it up, we have a 100 damage SMG with unseen strike to deal with bulldozers. While this build certainly isn't the easiest to use or the strongest in existence, you'll be able to go through a lot, whether that is horrible teammates or the game throwing its worst at you, as long as you do well. The build's performance completely and entirely depends on the player's performance, and by playing such builds, is how you reach consistency as a player. I believe that it's one of the best builds one could use in order to get a proper understanding of the death sentence difficulty. Anyway, that's my bit done. Огромное спасибо to Uncle for inviting me here and see you in the next 8 months.
The build you're about to see is a trip to play. Not exactly the trip I portrayed in the introduction, but more of a power trip. Give me a few minutes of your time and I'm sure you'll understand why. So without further ado, let's talk about an overwhelmingly powerful build that is still very fun to play. I hope the Akimbo Goliaths need no introduction, but in case they do, viewer Akimbo Goliaths, Akimbo Goliaths viewer. The judge I'm not going to bother introducing because we all know it. Now that we're all acquainted, we can talk about shotguns. They've been nerfed quite a bit, so much so that some people think they're the worst weapon type in the game. That's not exactly true since pistols exist, but shotguns aren't in a wonderful state. Or at least some of them. The Goliaths haven't been nerfed. Well, they have, damage range multipliers and pellet counts have damaged them, but relative to other shotguns and weapons in the game, that's making mountains out of molehills. These Goliaths will be your weapon for everything except shields and maybe snipers. Leave those to the judge. With the weapons covered, let's talk about the perk deck, which is Kingpin. Before you skip over this build, because Kingpin is no longer obtainable, I'd like to say that there will be other deck options I'm going to present to you in a moment. Just be patient. Here, this'll help. Also, if you look hard enough, you'll find Kingpin substitutes or replacements. Wink wink, nudge nudge. This build plays differently to other builds, and even other Kingpin builds because of the overwhelming power that comes with the Goliaths. You're at your best when you're under the injector effect, and killing will lower the cooldown, so you should be thinking about kills at almost all times. There are more advanced ways to play Kingpin, but you don't really even need to consider them for this build. Lastly, I want to touch on first aid kits. First aid kits on a build like this are not to be used defensively. They are to allow you to overextend and either slaughter everything in sight, or push an objective entirely on your own. Let's take a look at the build now. I'm not going to go over every skill, because I don't think they really need explanations, but I will highlight some things. Since I made this build with the assumption of enthusiastically useless teammates, there are double converts with Joker Aced. If you don't need it, drop confident. Done. If you're attentive, you may notice that no shotgun impact means that you don't have one shot breakpoint on heavies for the Goliaths. While that is true, it's not a big deal because of the amount of crits on this build. Since each Goliath has a separate chance to crit, some simple math shows that you have a pretty high chance to one-shot heavies, and even if you don't, just shoot again. Now, Unseen Aced is quite a point sink, and Optical Illusion's Ace doesn't do anything for this build, so you do have the choice to get those 16 points back. However, if you do that, your one-shot chance goes down, so I'd grab Inner Pockets, Basic Shotgun Impact, and Donald's Horizontal Leveler. Some other things you can spend your points on are Inspire if you want to do that type of thing, Overkill Aced if you want to swap to the Judge faster for shields, a second deployable, Swan Song, but unironically, anything you want, really. Finally, let's talk about what to do if you don't have Kingpin. I'll tell you first and foremost that Copycat Kingpin is not an option. It's so much worse than regular Kingpin that the decks aren't even comparable. A deck that is comparable is Leech, which has a similar idea to Kingpin. Switching this build over to Leech is simple enough. Drop the LBV to a suit, get rid of Hostage Shaker and Die Hard Aced, move first aid kits to Doctor Bags, get 9 lives, done. The rest of the points are yours to spend on anything you like. Another deck that exists as an option is Hacker. Drop the LBV for a suit, get rid of Die Hard Aced, Hostage Taker and Confident, and get dodge skills. Really, only Dock and Cover Aced is needed here, and while the other dodge stuff is nice to have, it's only here to allow Hacker to be as aggressive as Kingpin. And although Hacker can be similarly aggressive to Kingpin, and Leech can play similarly to Kingpin, this build really isn't the same while using those options. As long as you can get your hands on at least one Convert, this build has no flaws. Anyway, back to you, Uncle. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know why I said back to you, Uncle, there. Uh, clearly I made all of these last three builds myself. I was just sick, so that's why my voice sounded different, and... Yeah. No, 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 but for real. That was 7 overpowered builds, 2023 edition, with three of them made by these three hot individuals. Thanks for joining me today, guys. Make sure you guys check those people out, as they have some really good content going on. You will find a link to their channels in the description. Now it has been a while since I made my last proper build video, as I want to make other things, but I think a video like this one here and there surely won't hurt. And my previous best build video is long overdue anyway, considering that video has outdated builds. Regardless, I do think this video here is a bit like filler content, because it doesn't have all that much editing compared to my previous videos. But that is mainly because I'm moving out actually. I'm also building or converting a van at the same time, all while working as well. It is pretty hard for me to find proper time to make content at the moment, and it's just gonna continue like this for a bit. So don't expect another upload within the next 3 to 4 weeks or so. I hope you lads understand. Anyway, we also did reach 7k subscribers recently, which is absolutely insane, considering I was at like 6k not too long ago. It has been going on pretty well on the channel, so I want to thank you guys for supporting. 
If this keeps going on, we're gonna reach 10k subscribers pretty easily, actually. And if that does happen, I'm gonna make some sort of special video for it. Which is probably gonna be another Q&A or something, I, I don't know. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one, I guess. Thank <laughs> you.